I'm a scientist and entrepreneur working on diagnostics technologies. I've been working on fast antibiotic tests for sepsis for, I think, seven years now. Have you heard of what sepsis is? Yeah, sepsis is a very serious and deadly medical condition caused by bacterial infection in our body. The timely treatment of correct antibiotic to that patient is almost important to save that patient. Seven years ago, uh, we got an idea of using microfabrication technology to tackle this problem. And I think we worked uh, for two years, and we got some promising initial results, and we published it. So up to this point, uh, this was just one exciting project, you know, one of the many exciting projects we are doing in, the, in my group. Um, but things changed. After that publication, uh, I think it was five years ago, I got a sudden phone call at night at home. It was about midnight, and it was a calling from a stranger, an old man. So he was waiting, he was in the waiting list in Incheon Airport to take a flight to the United States to meet his, his son. And he said his son is now in hospital, unconscious, fighting with the sepsis. So he asked me, is there anything I can do to help his son? And actually, I said no, because it was just an academic project at the time. You know, his voice was desperate and shaky, hung up with tears, and I was very sad. I think it was that time I really, like, realized what I've been doing. But these are the names of, of the victims of sepsis. I think just as the old man's son, you know, they would have been a beloved family member. Sepsis is a real killer. It's a silent and sudden killer. Sepsis kills like a six million people every year. And every day, you know, 16,000 people uh, die with sepsis. And one out of three hospital deaths is caused by sepsis. Sepsis is very fatal because the motility rate of sepsis is like 20-30%. It's a two, three times higher than heart attack or stroke. So it's very, very deadly disease. Why? Do you know why the multilateral rate of sepsis is so high? It's due to the time. Time doesn't matter. When, when it comes to sepsis, we are actually at war with time. In this war, lives are saved by hours, not by days. You see this graph. The survival rate of sepsis you know, goes down by 7 to 9% every hour before actually a patient gets correct antibiotic treatment. So it's very important to fight with the time. So let's look a little more into uh, detail. So, you know, bloodstream infection is one of the main causes of sepsis. So this is what the normal, uh, you know, person's blood look like. Within a drop of the blood, you will have a million you know, blood cells, white blood cells, eating up all these bacteria, and you know, billions of red blood cells. So there are a lot of human cells. You know, even, uh, you know, we have a lot more microbes in our body than human cells, but within the blood, we shouldn't have any microbes. So even you can find these little microbes here in this picture, you know, this patient is in a serious uh, condition because that means the immune system is already losing and this bacteria starts, you know, dividing every 20, 30 minutes and then it spreads over uh, the body and, you know, that's a very dangerous situation. So before it actually, you know, go into this deadly condition, 
uh, we need to uh, help the immune system using these weapons. That's the antibiotics. These are frequently used antibiotics in the hospital. You know, there are more than you know, 50 of them. And the doctor's task is to find out which one is the best for uh, their patient and uh, this unknown pathogen, which might have a resistance. So we need to find out a way to test out this antibiotic outside the, the patient body. And that experiment, and then we probably need to repeat uh, for all these antibiotics. So that experiment is called antibiotic susceptibility test. It's actually a very simple test. We have a very clear vial here with a, filled with a gross media, and we isolate a pathogen from the patient blood and you know, mix it together with the antibiotic you like to test out. So, and you wait for like a day, then if the antibiotic is not working, you know, resistance, then they will start dividing every 20, 30 minutes. And then in the morning, you know, the population of this pathogen inside the vial will reach critical, you know, concentration. Usually it's a 10 to the 5 or 10 to the 6. Then the transparency of this vial will change. It becomes milky. Then it's a, you shouldn't use that antibiotics. If it just stays as clear, then you know, antibiotic is doing the work, so you can use it. So this is a very simple test, but as you can see here, it's already a day. But the problem is, to get this pathogen out of the patient's blood, you need another two days. So the first day, we need to culture blood because there are so small number of bacteria. So we use one day here. And then, you know, all this mixture, we need to purify the bacteria uh, to have a very accurate concentration for you know, next AST testing. So basically, we need uh, two different culturing steps. So, you know, we need three days, and I think it's too much. So we came up with an idea uh, of mixing this technology and you know, we were able to reduce this last two days down to six hours using our system. So we got a lot of time, probably 30 to 50 hours, depending on the pathogen, uh, you know, we can save. How we do it? So within just one slide, I'd just like to say we just take a very close look at the pathogen. So instead of isolating this pathogen uh, out of the patient's blood and then you know, wait for a few days to increase the number, we just looked at the single cell uh, pathogen uh, at the presence of the blood cells, and we silently watch. Usually people just care about you know, growing or non-growing, but to get the accuracy, we start collecting other information, such as a shape change. So we collect all these informations and you know, look at the shape and connect that with the AST result to get these things work. So that's the scientific principle of our device. How we implement it, this is it. So we made a microchip, which has an antibiotic and a chamber for imaging. So the pathogen is fixed in, in 3D, and then this antibiotic is diffused into the chamber and we can actually watch, and we take a lot of data. We take a lot of pictures. So that's the principle. But the problem is, uh, to take this machine and bring it to the hospital, that actually takes a lot of effort. First of all, we had to make an automatic system. So we integrated, like a photonics, and microfabrication and big data analysis, and we put everything in one machine so that you know clinician doesn't need to you know go through a lot of you know manual process for accuracy. And it takes seven years of you know a lot of people's effort from academia and startup and multiple clinical institutions. With their help, we collected 30 million data points to get this accuracy standard. From the recent clinical study performed by you know, talented uh, physicians in the Seoul National University Hospital using our system, you know, we were able to uh, you know, cut down the time before 
targeted correct antibiotic therapy from 64.5 hours down to 14.3 hours. So we have earned you know, 50 hours. So in this study, 30% of the patient who couldn't get the optimal therapy was able to get optimal therapy 50 hours earlier. So what does that mean? Do you know uh, how precious this 50 hour means? According to the clinical study and the literature, this 50 hour is enough to cut down the multilateral rate of the sepsis down to half. So that's a lot of lives. I, I'm very glad to see this as a scientist. Now I have a dream as an entrepreneur. So a few hospitals in Korea are testing out this system now. And then we, you know, they can take advantage of these 50 hours of the precious time we earned from the battle. And I'd like to see you know, more and more hospitals you know, all over the world actually can you know, use this system so that they can also take, the take advantage of this you know, 50 hours to saving a lot of lives. So I'd like to imagine, imagine in you know, three, five, ten years from now, when I, when I got up in the morning, you know, I'd like to actually feel you know, what happened last night and be happy. So this was our ongoing story of developing you know, life-saving devices for sepsis. I think uh, what I have you know, learned along the way is uh, we really need to take uh, action to make anything you know, working. The problem is, our story is just a little story, a you know, little part of the whole story of the sepsis. To make actually a uh, you know, world free of sepsis, you, know, you need a lot of story like us in new therapeutics and new diagnostics and also public awareness. If we don't start taking action today, then our children will have to pay for it with their lives in the future. As you can see here, the you know, world starts taking action. Let's move together. Thank you.